being talked about and tried across the country. It's a way for people to free themselves from destructive memories, and it seems to work, even in cases where years of conventional therapy have failed. No one understands exactly why this method succeeds, only that it does. So how does it work? Well, join Lynn Sure on a fascinating odyssey, the healing of a troubled mind. You are looking at a radical new form of psychotherapy. The key is the patient's eyes, shifting back and forth in a process that mysteriously unlocks the trauma of times past. Trauma like war. Eric Smith spent only nine months in Vietnam, but for decades the war tormented him. His body had survived. His mind was something else. There were six incidents in Vietnam with people getting killed. I had decided that had I done more, they wouldn't have gotten killed. Emotionally, I was a mess. I was severely depressed for over 20 years. Um, it was difficult just to get up in the morning and eat, get dressed, uh, and go to work. I started to get a really big fear of death, and um, things just started getting worse. For Elise Terranova, the memory that terrorized her life was the night she was raped during college. I always thought about the rape every day. And, um, Every day when I woke up, when I'd be blow drying my hair, anything that I was doing that, you know, I didn't have to concentrate on, I would just be thinking about it, remembering it. And um, it was driving me crazy. I just wanted to get it out of my everyday thoughts. Then Elise, like Eric, discovered a new and unique kind of therapy. It's called EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. It's being practiced by some 7,000 therapists across the country and the numbers are growing. It's a combination of traditional talk therapy with something that sounds bizarre. Here's how it works. The therapist rapidly moves his or her fingers, or an object like a wand, before the patient's eyes for several seconds at a time, while the patient talks about an upsetting image. We can't show you the actual hand movements because therapists are concerned that untrained people, improperly mimicking the technique, might possibly cause harm, but we can give you a pretty good sense of it. This is an actual EMDR session. Okay. The therapist who is facing us is about to start. Okay, just notice that. The client is dealing with panic attacks. Look at his eyes and watch how they follow the therapist's wand, and how, after he does this for several seconds, he gets very emotional. Okay, it out. The procedure is repeated several times in the session, along with more traditional therapy. This eye movement technique was developed by Dr. Francine Shapiro. While on a walk one day, she noticed that when she thought about something disturbing, her eyes moved in a certain way, and then the thought no longer upset her. Then I started doing it deliberately to see if it would work, and the same thing happened. The thought shifted away, and when I brought it back, it wasn't as disturbing. If I had seen you de that day in the park, what would I have noticed about your eyes? That they were moving very rapidly in a diagonal, just ra flickering up and down very, very rapidly. So I thought I stumbled upon some mind process that worked with thoughts. And that's what was so fascinating, because I hadn't been doing it deliberately, but I noticed it happening. Now, translating this into something you could use on other people, you found what? People's eyes couldn't move that way by instinct or naturally? Right, and I had to use, start using my hand to guide them to make similar types of eye movement. Dr. Shapiro isn't sure why eye movements are effective, but believes it's connected to the rapid eye movements, or REM, that occur in the brain during dream sleep. One theory is that REM sleep helps us cope with upsetting incidents, in effect making life's nightmares more manageable by a process still not understood. A shock to the system like war or rape, interrupts that natural process and keeps us from coping. When a trauma occurs, that processing mechanism gets disrupted. It doesn't work. The brain goes into shock and the, the, the mind just repeats the information over and over again. When we deal with the eye movement in the office, we seem to be able to open up that blocked processing and accelerate it. That's what happened to Elise Terranova who had been searching for relief from the trauma of her rape. Relief she had not gotten after two years of traditional therapy. My fear of death was just getting worse and worse. I was afraid to fly. I never used to be. It got so bad that one time I uh, got on a plane and walked off because I thought for sure I was going to die in a plane crash. 
when I drove, I would get really nervous. I always thought my car was going to crash. Um, I was just always very anxious and nervous. And so then um, my uncle mentioned a doctor um, who did EMDR, and he gave me his name, and he said, you know, why don't you try this? He didn't think it could hurt. Can you describe the therapy? He'd ask me to bring up the rape in my mind, and I would describe one specific situation to him. I described when I met the man, when the man first attacked me. And then he says, okay, keep that picture in your mind. And then he takes his fingers, and he waves them in front of your eyes, and you follow his fingers. It's kind of like when you're watching tennis, you know, back and forth, back and forth like that. And um, at the end, the scene was completely changed. I, and I don't know how this happens. I can't tell you how it works, but I felt the scene in my mind was I was in the clouds, like floating in the clouds, looking down over a field of flowers instead of looking down over a man attacking me. But this was after one session? After one session, it made a huge difference. And I continued for four or five more sessions with him. I didn't think it was going to change my whole life the way it did. I just, I'm, I'm amazed. I still am. According to Dr. Shapiro, this type of experience is not uncommon. After testing EMDR on a group of Vietnam vets with trauma disorders, she found that in some cases, just a single session provided relief. The study sounded too good to be true to Dr. Stephen Silver. He directs the post-traumatic stress disorder program at the VA Medical Center in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. I thought it was complete nonsense. I couldn't believe after 20-some years of working in the field of trauma response that anybody could produce those kinds of results so quickly. Dr. Silver decided to explore EMDR further and did his own studies. His patients reported surprising results. It leads immediately to a decrease in nightmares, intrusive memories, and flashback phenomena. It is one of the most powerful tools I've encountered for treating post-traumatic stress. Not everyone is as impressed as Dr. Silver. Critics have questioned whether EMDR is the snake oil for the 90s, charging that controlled studies are lacking, with no scientific basis to call EMDR an effective innovation. But don't try telling that to Eric Smith. He spent 20 years trying to cope with memories of Vietnam without success. He even considered suicide. And I decided that night that I had taken lives and that I did not deserve to be here. And I was just tired. I couldn't run anymore. What did you do? Well, I, I was in a, um, I was in a sixth floor hotel room. And I decided that I was going to jump. And for whatever reason, I walked over toward the window and on the way to the window, I came to my senses and I stopped and I sat down. And I picked up the phone and dialed the police and just told them where I was. And then I needed help. He was and desperate to find something that might relieve his suffering. And despite qualms about trying something that sounded so strange, Eric Smith decided to see Dr. Shapiro and try EMDR. I thought, what the heck is this going to do? You know, I mean, I've been working hard for years trying to get rid of this stuff uh, with a lot of good people and have a lot of experience. It was sort of difficult to believe or to understand. She started working with me, and I started feeling better, and it would stick. It would stay. I wouldn't, you know, two or three weeks later, that stuff wouldn't come back. It wouldn't bother me. You're an engineer. Um, you analyze things for a living. Mm -hmm. Have you figured this one out, why it worked? In traditional counseling or groups, I could keep my defenses up. But in trying to deal with this doggone hand movement at the same time, I couldn't do it. I mean, I'd been working on this stuff for years prior to working with her. And within two or three or four sessions, we had resolved issues that I'd been discussing for four or five years with other people. Are you concerned that some people will see this as a wonder cure? Is it a quick fix? No, no, it, it goes along, it's hard work, it takes, uh, it takes a good amount of clinical skills in order to implement it, and this isn't just touch the person's forehead and they get better. The, cl the client and the clinician really have to be responsible and work at it, but it goes much more rapidly than traditional types of therapy. That speed transformed Eric Smith's life. It's now been seven years since his last EMDR session. 
Life couldn't be better. It just couldn't be everything. <laughs> everything is wonderful. Lynn, it's interesting that there's a concern about showing the actual therapy on TV. What's the basis of that? Well, I think Dr. Shapiro and others would like us to put a big label up that says, don't try this at home, you know, as if it were a really dangerous thing. They say it looks simple, but in fact, it's a very powerful therapeutic tool. And if you're not trained properly, you could very well misuse it and you could cause harm. Cause so trouble. that's why they insist that we not show it and that people only go to licensed therapists. Now, how would you find a therapist that you knew to be trained in this? In well, the, the best thing to do is to ask your physician. Um, and he or she can go to the EMDR Institute out in California and get the names of one of their 7,000 people who are licensed to do this right now. And the number's growing. So that's the best way to do it. That's one of the most interesting things I've run into in a long time. Thank you, Lynn.